Kate, I might um, start with yourself, but um, what's driven you and your interest to build a career in the red meat industry? Hi everyone. Um, so from a very young age, I wanted to be a vet because it was the only job that I knew um, growing up in the city that worked with animals. Um, I don't have a background in agriculture. Unfortunately, um, none of my family works in ag. I often wonder whether I might have been the milkman's child or something because I don't know where the interest came from really, but the only thing I can really drive it down to is the fact that I wanted to work with animals. Um, and when I was fortunate enough in all the moves that I've done in my life um, to move to Bathurst um, in New South Wales, I discovered agriculture. Um, not the agriculture that I had in Sydney where we had one alpaca, one sheep and one Shetland pony at PLC in Pimble. Um, but now I got to work with, um, got to work in sort of real agriculture, I would say. So it sort of started from there, I guess. Um, and then it's, it's, I've never really had any specific direction. I've just kind of gone with where it's taken me. And here I am as a land management officer and an advisor sitting with you guys. So, yeah. Great. And Vicky, what about yourself? Um, what, what's driven you to have an interest in the red meat industry and a career? Um, so I married into um, a pretty well respected um, grazing family from Western Queensland. I was a racetrack brat. Um, and one of the things that I've discovered through through my in-laws is just I have an absolute passion for land and, and cattle. Um, that's something about when you marry in to the main family, all you really get is just nods and grunts and whatever else. So you spend a lot, a lot, a lot of hours observing and listening when they do say something, you know, that it's, um, it's gold. Um, coming from being cattle producers, um, we've really suffered from drought. My husband and I decided um, back at the end of 2002 to um, go our own way, step out of a family partnership because we knew we were young enough to start again. And we'd left with some heifers um, that become bogged. Tambo got six and a half inches on black soil and bogged them after trying to keep them alive as a start. And that sent us on our way um, into the Northern Territory for over 10 years, managing um, cattle properties, one up there in Central Arnhem land and then right up in on the Mary River floodplain. So you got a real crash course in nutrition and keeping cattle alive and all of that sort of stuff. But through that, the Department of Ag up there, the NT was very proactive and I was lucky enough to be one of the producers that helped to set the northern beef um, EBVs and indices because we quickly realised that you've got to have the right genetics for where you're living. And um, that really has started me. And I feel that everything that we've gone through, we come back to our own property in 2016, down in Chinchilla, and realised we were soon starting to head into drought yet again. Um, and we broke the mould and went into Wagyu production because we can run less cattle of higher value um, on our smaller place. And ultimately, this last drought, um, we realised needed to work off farm and I was lucky enough to become a climate mate. And I feel like everything that I've learned over all the years of all the battles with drought and living in really tough conditions has set me up to be perfectly placed. Um, and as a climate mate, it's even pushed me further now to learn even more. Um, that I'm actually now a 50-year-old uni student, <laughs> so for the first time. Oh my gosh, Vicky, that is an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done an incredible job in telling that story. Um, so, so with that in mind and, and your experience on how you've gotten uh, to here today, what are you hoping to get out of today? What's, what's the one big thing that you want to take away from, from this session? is how to be um, a better climate mate. Um, ultimately, as a climate mate, I'm an extension officer. And yes, I've got real skin in the game and I do practice what I preach. Um, but it's learning how to, to deliver that better um, because as a climate mate, as we move into NACP3 now, um, it's more about that one-on-one -on -one and we're um, very much about seeing practice change. Northern Australian Climate Program is very much about 
um, seeing adoption and practice change and um, meeting those KPIs. So um, that's my next step and, and I realised that not coming from an extension background and being very much a producer who's so heavily invested in what they're doing on property that the network of people that I have to call upon, I need to increase that. So I'm hoping to learn how to be a better um, extension officer, but also to increase my network where I can see a real synergy. Um, because even though we talk about the climate program, I'll just, um, it's not just about our climate drivers and all of that, it's about helping producers to um, look at things even on the short term, not just the long term. And I use, uh, for example, myself, you know, I've just um, sent some cold cows, um, knowing that they needed to hit, hit ultimate pH. I've delayed knowing what the weather was going to be using our um, experimental products. So, and they did, they hit the kill floor yesterday, they hit ultimate pH. If I would have sent them when we would have, I would have had stock in transit, which would have been, had rain on them, and I can guarantee they would not have hit ultimate pH. So our program with NACP is more, um, not just your long-term drivers, but also your short-term effects. And I think there is a real synergy um, across a lot of the different um, things that are being delivered, so yeah. Brilliant, thanks Vicky. Um, Kate, what about yourself? What's the one big thing you're hoping to get from today? Well, this might be a little bit cliche, but um, I just want to read something out of the book that everyone's got in front of them. So today in the welcome, it says um, MLA wants to bring industry professionals together to network and share the latest in red meat R&D. Each event is designed by advisors for advisors, providing opportunities for you to gain skills, tools and knowledge, which will enhance your offering to livestock clients. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's the main reason why I'm here today. Um, I am only four years into uh, extension work as a land management officer with Fitzroy Basin Association. Um, so I'm here to learn. Um, Catherine, I'm making a beeline for you at Smoko. I apologise in advance. Um, I will be asking questions. Um, and anyone else in the room, like I, I, I probably wasn't prepared for the amount of knowledge that would be in the room today. So. I'd really like to get around and speak to as many of you as possible and understand um, and appreciate what your experiences in the industry have been. We're all obviously from very different backgrounds. If anyone else doesn't have a traditional background in ag where you grew up on a farm, please come and introduce yourself. Um, I'd love to hear about your journey and how you got to where you, be, or where you are today. Um, so yeah. Brilliant. Uh, please congratulate our two bursary recipients. <laughs>